Welcome back, everybody. We are in week two of CIT 15, and I'm glad you're here. Congratulations to you, kudos to you for continuing to show up and learn this material. We keep going. That's the number one factor which correlates with student success is that you just don't quit. If you keep going, if you keep going, if you keep going, if you got grit, that's the number one thing that you could do to succeed. So keep tuning into these lectures, keep doing the work, don't give up, do it for enough years, and eventually you'll have your doctorate and you'll be a professor or all kinds of windows and doors of opportunity will be open to you. So just don't quit, just keep doing it. I'm checking to make sure that my recorder is running. And now I'm gonna show you what we're doing for week two. And then we're also gonna talk a little bit about computers because that's what this class is all about. So for week two, going into Canvas, you will notice inside Canvas it now says week number two. You should have already watched this welcome video. And down here where it says watch these lecture videos, you will now see week two's lecture video there also. There is also a link here for free tutoring. So this is online tutoring. So if you're stuck, definitely click this link and reach out to this individual here. His name is Rocky. He's a former student of mine. He's super awesome, super nice. Definitely somebody you wanna get in touch with if you need help. And that's where you do it right there is uh, that free tutoring deal. Uh, the next thing is just to kind of go over our assignments. So in assignments, you wanna come into the assignments and you wanna scroll down. You should be done with all of your week one assignments. And this week, you wanna do all your week two assignments. So get all these done right in here. There's some really good stuff in here, like getting clear on your goals, Google Calendar, rotating between open applications with uh, Alt Tab, select all using find undo redo, your computer's properties, recovering a file from the trash if you're on Windows, ejecting a USB drive, antivirus software, USB drives and viruses, and drive properties. So check those out. Good assignments, have fun, enjoy them, learn something. It's all good. Uh, next thing you wanna do is you wanna come into discussions and you wanna do week two's dis discussion. And week two's discussion is tech as a tool. So first week was getting to know each other. This next week, tech as a tool, uh, drop in and you know reflect upon how tech as a tool. We talked about how tech as a tool, do you use it or does it use you? Do you use it? or does it use you? We reflected upon that in week one's lecture. But uh, make sure you, you check out on YouTube um, or rent this movie wherever, but watch this Disconnect trailer. You wanna watch the movie Disconnect before you post to that discussion, maybe comment on that, that, that movie. And then also you want to watch at and It Can Wait text, All right? So, uh, it's like 10 minutes long. It can wait right here at the last text. That's it. Don't text while driving documentary. So make sure you check that out because that might save your life or save the life of somebody you know. And then come in here and post the discussion tech as a tool. Next thing you want to do is come into my IT lab, my lab IT, whatever it's called. And you should be done with the Windows 10 exam. You want to do the first word exam. So come into the word thing here and do chapter one simulation exam. So that one there. If you can't get past that, if you don't know how to do it, go do the training. I don't care if you do the training or not. Do the training if you need it. What is assigned, you can see assigned right there, is the chapter one simulation exam. So make sure you take that chapter one simulation exam for Microsoft Word. This is week two. Every week we do one of those. And then uh, come down to exams here. And inside exams, you wanna do the chapter quiz for week, you know, chapter two. So that's uh, the chapter quiz right there, chapter two, chapter two quiz. Uh, and if we look at chapter two, so now that's kind of an overview of what you need to do this week. If you look at chapter two, uh, here's a high level view of what you're going to learn in this chapter. And again, you can access your textbook by going to course materials, my course, and course materials inside here, you'll find the textbook and the PowerPoints. But what we're gonna learn in here, and we'll just do a quick overview of this, and then I'm gonna give you my take on it, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the PowerPoint presentation of the textbook just to make sure we covered everything. There's a lot of material in this chapter. So usually I would take a couple of weeks to cover this material, uh, but you know, uh, we'll go through it and uh, we'll
we'll see uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so the learning objectives of this chapter, and we'll just cruise through them quickly, are to describe the four main functions of a computer system and how they interact with data and information. So you don't need to memorize any of this stuff. This is just a preview, right? And we're going to look at that. That's IPOS, input, process, output, storage. We're going to define bits and bytes and describe how they are measured, used, and processed. We're going to list common types of computers and discuss their main features. Uh, we're going to identify the main types of keyboards and touch screens, right? Not that difficult. Describe the main types of mice and pointing devices, right? And explain, <laughs> explain how images, sounds, and sensor data are input into computer devices, computing devices. Uh, and then we're going to describe options from out, uh, for outputting images and audio, so input and output. And we're going to describe various types of printers and describe the functions of the motherboard and RAM and explain the main functions of the CPU and describe the various means for storing data and information within computing devices and then describe common types of ports used today. And uh, ports is like where you plug in a cable on a computer, that's a port. And describe how to manage power consumption in com computing devices. So usually like, you know, see if I've got my little window down here. I could just go down here and type in power. And power and sleep settings right there, right? So I click on that and let me just bring it over. And then in here I could say, you know, how am I connected? There's like some way to say if I'm on battery, this one doesn't have battery, so maybe it's not showing it on a laptop. What to do on battery, what to do when plugged into the wall, how long until all the screen goes off, right? The PC never goes to sleep, whatever you wanna choose, power settings. And, uh, and then define ergonomics and discuss the ideal physical setup for using computer devices. So ergonomics is the study Ergonomics is like how well is how well is a machine or a car or whatever. It's a study of people's efficiency in their working environment. Your desk, the computer. How well does something work with you? It's a noun. So the ergonomics of a car, the ergonomics of a workstation, and you want your body to, you know, like this image here. You want your body to be in a good position when you're working at a computer. I'm just checking to make sure you can see that. You know, so basically right angles there, right angles here, right angle there. Wrists are not resting on the desk because you get carpal tunnel syndrome. You know, you want to be comfortable. You want to be relaxed. If you start to notice any pain, you need to shift something. So that's ergonomics. And it's important because if you don't take care of your physical health when using machines, those machines can hurt you. And it's the same with computers. If you don't use computers correctly, they can hurt you. All right. So let's uh, first talk about computers. So I'm just checking that out, seeing what that looks like. And uh, the four basic, re com the reason computers exist is to take data and turn it into information. Okay, so that's the number one reason computers exist, is to take data and turn it into information. And, uh, you know, you could kind of think about that. And so when you think about that, right, like uh, Yelp or Google restaurant reviews, right, like that's data. A whole bunch of people have rated a restaurant and they're telling you what they think of it. Is it good? Is it not good? And you could choose a good restaurant based upon that. You could, you could find, right, like you could search for which restaurants are open right now. And that data is all stored somewhere. And when you ask that question of Google, it gives you the information. So we've taken data and we've turned it into information. Um, so restaurant reviews, right, like what restaurants are open. Driving directions, like what's the best route from here to San Francisco and how long will it take me if I'm in a car, if I use public transportation, if I walk, if I bike, like all of that data is there. <laughs> and when we ask the question, right, like it looks at all the data and gives us information. So data might be like the score that every student got on an exam. And information would be give me the average of the exam for the whole class. Like it looked at all the scores, calculated the average, gave me that information. So computers exist to take data and turn it into information. Like that's just a good framework, a good construct to know that this is why this machine exists. 
And by the way, the word computer comes from people. Uh, it was a job, right? Like just right now we have, I don't know what job, lawn mo yard guy, yard person, right? That's a job. Or we have, you know, chef or cook. That's a job. Um, truck driver. That's another job. Teacher. That's another job, right? Well, back in the day, there used to be a job called a computer. It wasn't a machine. It was a job. And you could apply for the position of being a computer. You would compute problems. You like did math. And they worked for the shipping company companies in England, right? The shipping companies in England back in the day had jobs called, you know, there's a position called a computer. You could be a computer where you would compute the shipping tables. How much, how far, you know, uh, how far is it from one place to another? How much is it to ship from one place to another? and you'd create these tables and that was your job. You were a computer. And so that's where the phrase computer comes from is somebody who is doing computations. And so that's kind of interesting too. So computers take data and turn it into information and they're called computers because that used to be a job in England. It was a position. And then the next thing you need to know about computers is they operate on four, four basic functions, right? So this is what computers do. That's what. That's what computers do. This is how they do it, okay? This is how they do it. And I stands for input. Let's look and see if you can see that. P stands for processing. Input processing, output, storage. IPOS, input processing, output, storage. Those are the four functions of a computer. It's how a computer computes. Input, processing, output, storage. And it's not that different from how your mind works. And so I'm gonna give you a math problem just to illustrate this. And I get kind of nervous that these videos might drop. And if I do, I lose everything. So I might restart this video and break this up into a couple of chunks. Um, so what is two, two? What is two, the number two, plus Seventeen. Two plus seventeen is nineteen. Okay, so for you to have computed that problem, you needed to have input, right? You heard it, it came in through an input port, came in through your ear. You needed to have storage, right? So IPOS, input processing, output storage. You need to have input, you need to have storage, because I gave you one number, two, and then I gave you an operator plus. And then I gave you another operand, 17, right? And then you process that. So you needed to be able to store the two, the plus, and the 17. So you needed input, you needed storage, and then you needed processing. Two plus 17 is 19. Who knows how processing works, right? Not even the best neuroscientists or psychologists or psychiatrists know how consciousness and the brain and the hardware, which is the mind, nobody knows how it really works. But you processed it and you came up with 19. So you needed input, your ears. You needed storage somewhere in here. <laughs> you needed processing. You processed it. And then you needed output. Like if we were in person, you would have been like, mm -hmm. output, right? Out of your mouth. And so just like that's how the mind works and how you work, you have input, storage, processing, output. Another way you could say that is IPOS, input, processing, output, storage, right? Just like you work that way, that's also how computers work. So that's how computers do what they do, those four basic functions. And when we look at computers, I gotta get a paper towel. Hold on. I'll pause this video so you don't need to wait. Okay, we're recording again. And here is that, here is that info if you just wanna pause this and take a picture of it with your cell phone or something, because now I'm gonna erase it, right? Take data, turn it into information, four basic functions of computer, input, process, output, and, output, and storage. And one of the things that you'll learn, hopefully right now, because the sooner you learn this, the easier school becomes. But one of the things you'll learn about academia, which is school, one of the things you'll learn about academia is that people in school and academicians, academicians, I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Let's have a little example. 
of how we could use technology. Uh, but I don't have uh, here. Oh my gosh, there we go. Let's see if we do this. And I'm going to look up academician define. And academician, and I'm just going to put these headphones over the, right near the microphone. Let me make sure my volume is up. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, here we go. Let's see what it says. And you can push this button. Academician. 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 So I said it well, well enough. But, you know, if you're ever not sure, that's a nifty little tool. So one of the things people do, academicians, humans do, is they like to categorize stuff. You do this all the time, even if you aren't aware of it. And interestingly, here's like a really highfalutin, right? Here's a really highfalutin phrase. Highfalutin. Uh, pompous or pretentious. <laughs> here's a highfalutin phrase. And that highfalutin phrase is on, on, ontology, okay? And so ontology is the branch of metaphysics which deals with the nature of being. The branch of metaphysics dealing with the nature of being it is also a set of concepts and categories in a subject area or domain that shows their properties and the relations between them. What's new about our ontology is that it is created automatically from large data sets. It's basically what humans do. We break things down into categories. And we put things into boxes. You do this with everybody you meet. That person's this type of person. That person is that type of person. They're a big truck person. They are like, you know, streetcar racing person. They are like the Toyota, Honda, cost conscious person. That's like a suburban kind of family vehicle, right? You do this, there's the Ferrari or the Lamborghini. That's like a, somebody who, you know, there you have a category for that in your head. We're always putting in things into categories. So one of the things that happens in school a lot is just a whole bunch of categorization and people giving names to things. And when you learn that, it's kind of like, oh man, this is just a game, right? It's like, how are we breaking up this large body of knowledge into smaller pieces so that it's more chewable, so that we could get our minds around it? And so we do the same thing in, you know, computer land. And so computers, Computers can be broken up into hardware and software. Okay? Computers can be broken up into hardware and software. And this is an ontology. This is the ontological structure, by the way. We've taken a big concept. We've broken it up into two categories. And then hardware can be broken up into input devices, right? Processing devices, output devices, and storage devices. And then software can be broken up into system software and apps, application software, right? And system software can be broken up into your operating system, your utilities, and uh, operating system, utilities, drivers. Well, I'll just put that in there. And we'll learn about what drivers are at some point. Okay, so that's kind of like the ontological structure of this domain of knowledge. Computers are broken up into hardware and software. Software is broken up into that stuff. And hardware is broken up. And this is all arbitrary and random. It's logical, but somebody just said, this is the way we're gonna do it. Here, it become more subjective. Maybe business software, personal software. I don't know, maybe social media, right? We could create all kinds of different little structures over here, categorizations of what belongs in what different category. PC versus Mac, right? Like we could break that up in all kinds of different ways. But then here's hardware. So we have input devices. What are some input devices? How do, you get, how do you get stuff into the computer? Keyboard, microphone, video camera, mouse, right? All input devices. What are some output devices? Monitor, <laughs> printer, speakers, right? All output devices. What are some storage devices? Okay, so storage devices we have, you know, like a hard disk drive, a solid state drive, a thumb drive, okay? We have the cloud, we could store stuff in different ways, but generally speaking in a computer, we're thinking about, you know, CDs, DVDs, flash drive, solid state storage drive, hard disk drive, those are the kinds of things. And then we have the processing device, which is the CPU. So we break everything up into those categories. That's good to know. 
Okay, so that's kind of like a basic introduction to the structure of computers, what computers, why they exist, right? To take data and turn it into information. And then how they do what they do. There's four functions to computer, input, process, output, storage. And then uh, the ontological structure of computers. And computers are broken up into hardware and software. And then, you know, those are broken up into other categories. Specifically, hardware is broken up into IPOS, right? Like that's a big one to remember. And software is broken up into system software and apps. And this isn't so you can know it in some test. This is just so you can kind of understand how academics works and how we've done this categorization with computers. And so you have some framework for starting to think about this stuff. One of the important takeaways is that both hardware and software are necessary. Like the hardware does nothing without the software. The software runs on the hardware. And, and likewise, the software would be useless if there wasn't hardware for it to run on. So you need both parts. You need both parts. So let's come back and take a look at the PowerPoint presentation and see where we, we are at. And I think I'm gonna do that in the next video. So there'll be a part two to this because if I drop this video after like 40 minutes, I'm just not gonna do a week two lecture. <laughs> All right, so I'll see you in the next video. There'll be a part two to this video, tune into that. If I can find my mouse and turn this off, see you in the next video.